tonight's debate. Joining us from Houston, Maria Urbina. She's the national political director for Indivisible, a nationwide movement of thousands of volunteer-led local groups that engage in progressive advocacy. Also with us, senior editor of News and Politics at Essence Magazine, Kirsten West Savali. Essence and the Black Women's Roundtable just released their fifth annual Power of the Sister Vote survey, which asks which issues matter the most to black women ahead of the 2020 elections. So Kirsten, I want to start with you. Tell us what the numbers show and what you'll be watching tonight in Houston. Well, the numbers show, first, good morning. Thank you for having me. The numbers show that black women contain multitudes and by necessity are interested in a wide array of things. Number one being policing reform and criminal justice, followed by affordable housing and healthcare concerns. So what I expect to see tonight is with the influence and impact that black women have had on previous elections is for those things to be addressed in a very clear eyed uh, face forward way and not to be just pushed to the side as they typically are. I'm looking at the, some of the polling here. The number that jumped out at me is that among people who responded to your poll, 95, 95% said they plan to vote in the 2020 presidential election. This is an important and engaged group of voters. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and even speaking to your previous guest, speaking about Joe Biden, what we see is older black women, of course, name recognition of the Democratic Party of for sure still supporting Joe Biden. But we're going to have to deal with more than his gaps, right? You know, we have to talk about things that are considered, that I would consider, and many would consider to be racist. There's the statements about uh, poor students are just as smart as white students. There's the architecture of the 94 crime bill. There's Anita Hill. There's a lot of different things that we have to look for that are just more than just, oh, he's just good old Uncle Joe and these are just gas. Uh, Elizabeth Warren is making a lot of sense. You know, she there is criminal justice plans there. She is meeting black women where we are. She's bringing us to the table and she's coming to our table and saying, what do you need and what do you want? So it's, it's a bit more than just gaps that we're looking at. Yeah, we had the poll up just a minute ago. Joe Biden leads in your poll with 25%, Kamala Harris second at 15%, Elizabeth Warren at 12, Bernie Sanders at 10, but 26% is the leading vote getter as prefer not to answer other or hasn't made up, uh, the respondent hasn't made up her mind there. Uh, Maria, let me go to you for what you're looking at tonight through your lens as you watch the people on stage tonight. Great. Well, it's great to be back on. Last time we talked, we were coming out of Detroit, and our Indivisible survey at the time was expressing a lot of support for Warren and really anticipating this bump that we're seeing for her over the summer. And so tonight we're looking at candidates who can go beyond Trump. Absolutely, they're each going to have to make their case about how they beat Donald Trump. But we want folks, candidates, who are really clear about animating the historic turnout that we're going to need, the multiracial coalition that we're going to need to go up against his base that will be very loyal, will be very motivated. And so really we want to hear candidates talk about their vision for governing, not just their vision for how they beat Trump. Because beating Trump for our movement, for the indivisible movement, is the floor, not the ceiling. And what are the issues? What's at the top of mind of people that you speak with, people in your progressive group? Yeah, I mean, as we're organizing across the country, of course, the cost of health care, um, climate justice always comes up. But just this week in Houston, I'm so happy to be in the Lone Star with all of these to handle But just this week, we're having a week of action on immigration because Democrats cannot be sheepish about this issue. Donald Trump is going to make this an issue whether we like it or not. And our coalition, our base, includes immigrant families and their communities. And so we have to be clear about how we intend to defend them, how we intend to roll back the cruelty that we've seen under this administration. So immigration will continue to come up for us as well. Jason Johnson has a question. Jason, go ahead. So, Kirsten, good to, good to see you this morning. Uh, a question Jason, about the survey. So hello. basically, <laughs> good to see you. So you've got 26% of women in your poll uh, who basically said, what else you got, right? Like, this campaign's been going on for a while, and the majority still say, don't know, undecided. What do you think is going on with that large group of black women? Is it that they've not been impressed? Is it that they're basically waiting until this weeds itself out after Iowa, and then they're going to make a decision? Because that's a really large number of people to still be undecided this late into the campaign season. Well, you know, I think Fannie Lou Hamer has been telling us since 1964 that we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we're looking at something where we know that Donald Trump is not the, the root cause, that he's a symptom of America itself. And especially among Generation Z and millennial women, 
we're tired they're, they're tired of you know what are we going to vote against this is the biggest election of our lifetime you have to do this to protect the country but who's going to protect black women who's going to say we're going to do this for you um, you know we often say at the intersection of state and sexual violence that you see the bodies of black women so what are we going to do about militarized police forces that not only kill but rape what are we going to do about the fact that our children could be in neighborhoods that we deem safe and they're stalked and they're murdered and we're worried about that what can we do in love one are in the hospital and insurance companies and pharmaceutical companies and the healthcare system kind of conspire to if not outright kill us then they don't care if we die so it's a very important issue here and it's more about it's more than just donald trump so they're going to have to come a little harder than we have to be trump every election is a serious election we'll see if they do tonight kirsten west sabali and maria urbina thanks so much for your time this morning great to have you with us thank you so john thank harwood you. you're there in houston